When it first came out, Botox seemed crazy. Why would anyone intentionally inject a toxin into their face? Well, about 11 million people have now used Botox, and it's one of the most common non-surgical cosmetic procedures. Dr. Eugene Helveston is an emeritus professor of ophthalmology and former chairman of the Department of Ophthalmology at Indiana University School of Medicine. His book is called Death to Beauty, The Transformative History of Botox, and he joins us this morning. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. So this, we all know this started as an accident that they, they weren't developing Botox for what it's being used for, correct? Uh, that's basically correct, yes. So how has it become this, this beauty <clears throat> empire? Well, uh, Alan Scott, who developed uh, Botox eventually from botulinum A toxin, invi invited a lot of people to come into his lab, and he talked to a lot of folks, and he shared the fact that uh, this drug, uh, botulinum toxin, uh, could calm overactive muscles. And then from there, people who were treating uh, applied them to a lot of different overacting muscles around the body, different from the ones that uh, Alan originally uh, started to work with, and those were eye muscles. I'm, I'm trying to imagine being at that first meeting. We're going to inject botulism into your face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did you, how did, th I mean, the first couple of people who did that, I mean, I can't imagine. Well, yes, in 1978, the first human uh, received the injection. By that time, uh, Alan Scott had figured out a way to dilute the uh, toxin uh, down to the point where it was only uh, billionths or fraction of a billionth of a gram, mm. uh, and it was uh, diluted to be safe. What I find so curious about Alan Scott's story, too, is that, you know, you look at it now, it's got to be a billion-dollar business, I would imagine, but at the time, he sold it for $9 million, the drug, to another company. Uh, you know, how did that happen? Why Did they not know the... Did he or did no one really know the value of what it was at the time? Alan Scott was a unique person, <clears throat> and the best way to describe him was while we were writing the book, he said, uh, I think I had all the fun and Allergan made all the money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he sincerely did not care about making money. Mm. He was interested in straightening eyes uh, and finding out what this uh, toxin could do. And he was not a businessman and not after money at all. Do you think that it still remains to be seen what the long-term effects of people using this for too long might be? Uh, I don't think there's any likelihood that it'll be a long-term problem. Uh, botulinum toxin affects a single uh, agent in the body, acetylcholine, uh, and it doesn't destroy any tissue. It just stops the uh, uh, secretion of this uh, mediating agent for three or four months, and then everything is back to normal. Hmm. You know, we've seen it used also, obviously, not only for wrinkles, but for, you know, uh, people maybe that sweat too much, uh, different uses. Where do you think it goes from here? Is there, is there another evolution for Botox? That's a good question. People are talking more about using Botox for pain uh, and even, even depression. Uh, but the muscles are everywhere in the body and nerves are everywhere. And so it's just, uh, it, it, just up to the ingenuity of the treating uh, uh, the treater to find new ways to, to use the drug. Well, it's fascinating. Again, the book is Death to Beauty, the Transformative History of Botox. For more, you can check out eugenehelveston.com. Thank you, Dr. Helveston, for being with us. Thank you. Enjoyed it.